All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM joining you as usual from a very sunny San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Mark Havener, who is up in an equally sunny Los Angeles. How are you doing, Mark? I'm doing well. I could complain, but who would listen? That's very true. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know. Uh, I'm a, so Mark's a marketing communication strategist with a specialized focus on brand and executive thought leadership and corporate communications. And what we're going to talk about today is an interesting subject is transitioning marketing and, com and communications mindset for the next era of business. Uh, so Mark, let's get, let's get straight into it. Uh, first of all, kind of paint a picture of where, what you think the next era of business is, and then we talk about the marketing and how the marketing communications fits into that. Uh, primarily, I believe that, uh, the one thing that we can be certain about is that there's going to be uncertainty in the mm -hmm. long term. Uh, and I mean long term, I mean, I'm not sure that this sort of uh, disruptive environment is going to go away anytime soon. So uh, from a marketing communication standpoint, that means that we have to be in a posture of, 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 of a controlled reactionary state. In other words, we're not we can't really be set in our ways. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to be really resilient uh, with the ability to, uh, to 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 make quick decisions based on what's going on in the marketplace. And that's kind of un uncomfortable for a lot of marketing people or well, really for communications people, because you usually have your brand platform that you've built and that you've launched mm -hmm. and, and to course correct, even in one quarter can have <laughs> downstream repercussions that yeah. are hard to, hard to handle. Yeah, no, uh, I, I totally agree. And I think that's, that's a scary, uh, it's a scary scenario for a lot of people, that whole idea of being able to react quickly to pivot, you know, to tweak and maybe having less of those, I mean, not that there was ever real certainty, but people had convinced themselves that there was, you know, that there was a certain amount of predictability in their business and in business in general, um, that's, that's gone out the window. So I think uh, uh, that whole flexibility and uh, I guess what I always say to people is not getting married to projects because that's not going to really work that well for you. Absolutely. And I, I, I think that when you're looking for stability in your in your planning for marketing and communications, um, it, it's it's often easy to look at, say, a product line or a service offering mm -hmm. and kind of focus on that. Well, we're going to launch this in Q1 or we're going to do this in Q2. And 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 really, I think a, a, a better way of approaching it is what is it? What is the problem that we're fixing in the marketplace? And, and just stick with that. You know, the products and the services are going to be transient based on what's going on mm -hmm. in the world. But what is it that we're doing to fix the marketplace, to fix our industry? And, and then, you know, just kind of align all of your comms and marketing around around that. And, and that allows you to be resilient and reactionary without having to, you know, completely uh, buy into a track that might not play out. Yeah, because I mean, let's face it, uh, perception wise, there's, there's a perception that most products and services are commodities now that they're easily interchangeable, you know, SaaS models on technology, it all seems always oh, um, slotted in, slotted out at any time you want. So to your point, that idea of moving away from focusing on, you know, your products or your services or, uh, and more into the solving of the business needs and applying it to the current business circumstances. I mean, that's where you can start to differentiate yourself. Uh, absolutely, especially if you're doing that in, in conjunction with a, a level of authenticity. In other words, this is mm -hmm. something that the, the, the organization was built for. And, and so it makes sense that we're focusing on solving this problem. And whatever we call the product that does it or the service that does it, that might mm -hmm. change by the week. But the fact that we are committed to, to doing this is, is part of our identity. And therefore, it's what we're going to be doing every day, no matter what year it is. A lot of companies haven't really looked inward to find out why they exist and, and so mm -hmm. have a hard time coming up with an authentic expression of what they're doing and why. Um, yeah, no, no, I, I totally agree. And obviously, you know, authenticity has become a big buzzword at the moment. And uh, it's, uh, it's interesting. Yeah, you say like some companies haven't really discovered who they who they really are, yet they're trying to pretend to be authentic at the same time. So it's kind of hard to be authentic if you don't know who you are in the first place. Exactly. I think authenticity is a buzzword because audiences, consumers, business partners, investors are all looking for that authentic uh, feel. But 
-hmm. we can tell, I mean, just as humans, when something is inauthentic and, and the moment that you are wondering whether or not you're being authentic, that, that means to me that you haven't done the work <laughs> to figure out who you are and why you're doing what you're doing. Yeah. I, I mean, it's kind of like, I always compare, you know, that thing, it's like customer centric. I mean, that's one of the buzzwords that's been around for a while now. And you see it, I call it like bumper stickers, because you see it plastered all over somebody, a company's website, you know, banks are the best at this, you know, <laughs> plastered all over about how much they care about you, how customer centric they are. And then goodness, you try to interact with them. And it takes you about four days to actually get to a person and you go, hmm, it's and and the contrast it's almost better not to do it because the contrast is so stark so to back to your point of authenticity if you're going to say this is who you are you better be that right and and if you are that it's really easy to say i like to say that uh whenever a company or an organization hits a crisis and and pr it's it's usually because they haven't identified what they're doing and why and and how that relates to their personal vision or or their personal self and so what happens is when it, when the social media blows up over something that you're doing um if, if it if you don't know who you are then you're going to backpedal and say oh i'm sorry social media i got a course correct and i'm going to do my apology and then you know the other side of social media piles on you and yeah. turns into this problem but if you do know who you are and why you're doing things you can just say hey social media this is who i am you don't like it yeah. fine uh, and and that kind of response from a brand only works if you really are who you are who you say you are so how can how can marketing and communications professionals how can they help because this is an organization wide issue because you I mean you have to if you're going to communicate your brand and say you are something then everybody in the organization has to live that so i mean what what role does marketing communications have going forward really making sure that the whole organization kind of coalesces around the purpose uh, marketing communications often is, is driven by business by, by, mm -hmm. by business goals that were established. And, and I, I am saying that very carefully because often, at least in my experience, marketing communications aren't necessarily at the table when business goals are established. And so I think it's important for uh, whether you're in-house uh, doing the work of marketing comms or you're uh, you know, a professional agency or, or consultant to, to go first to the business goals. And, and make sure that that is hashed out. And, and there is, you know, there are plenty of exercises that marketing comms people can do with business leaders to make sure that their, their vision is carefully art articulated, that it's aligned with business goals. Mm -hmm. But it's almost like embedding yourself into, you know, why the business exists and what the goals are. And then, then you can create the downstream marketing and communications. But without that step, you, you're, you're likely going to be initiating programs that that have no no bearing on reality or that won't get the results that you're after. And 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 you might even get that inauthentic kind of uh, mm -hmm. campaigning that you get out of a lot of these big companies. So I think in answer to your question, the best thing that marketing and communications professionals can do is to get at the table with yeah. the C-suite when business goals are being developed. Yeah, so do you think that uh, maybe sometimes like marketing communications professionals uh, are not you know, not pushy enough to be at that conversation uh, at the table? And as you said, like are happy sometimes to take, OK, it's handed down. Now we can go to work. We can create all these assets. We know all of that stuff. So I think probably, as you said, like some of the mindset changes, one of those is probably where you have to be more assertive about you know, included in the conversation to say, I can't do this if I don't understand it. Yeah, right. I think that uh, we often as professionals tend to get into a tactical mode. And we always say on our websites that we're strategists. We all say that. I say that. Um, but but it really need to be a strategist. And, and a lot of that isn't, I mean, I guess there is some sort of, you have to be assertive about it, but it's more about like, I, I am there with you. I'm in this boat with you. We have to come up with a strategy together. And, and you know, I'm going to come at it with a different lens than you are, but but we have to do it together. And that that does take a, a certain metal amount of assertiveness, but I think it's just mm -hmm. common sense and, and understanding that that's your role. In addition to tactics, you really need to be thinking strategically as well with with the organization and with your client. That's the case. Yeah. Unfortunately, you know what they say about common sense. It's just not that common. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> uh, right. But so what are some of the other challenges you think facing marketing communications uh, professionals going forward? What are some of the other mindset shifts that you think are, are going to be needed as, as we move into whatever we whatever we're moving into? Well, I think that um, 
the, what discussions around the bottom line need need mm -hmm. to shift. Uh, there's, a, a, I mean, legacy companies, I see, companies that are sort of in this older model that we've long passed since you know four years ago. That that is very profit focused, and you know necessarily so because you have to survive as a company. But if that's your only bottom line, then um, a lot of decisions that come down the road um, uh, won't necessarily work in this new environment because uh, people have the sum total of all human knowledge at their fingertips and they have infinite amount of choices. And if you are trying to reach a consumer or um, a client or a, a business partner or whatever you're trying to do with your business, uh, they can choose from anything that they want. So they're going to naturally choose those that share values that they have, that they see a value in with the purpose that you're, that you're fulfilling. And they're also going to choose people that, uh, you, you know, have, have a clear sense of self. And so this goes back to the original point, but going forward, I, I think that it, it's table stakes to do it this way. Because if you, um, if you are just focused on profit, then so is everybody else and you're not going to stand apart and you're not going to get chosen. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the other part of uh, where they can play a huge role is the, you know, obviously on the customer experience side. And that's something that I think people, that's where a lot of people are measuring. You, know, you could have two products or two services. You could have one moment could even be slightly better than the other. But if the customer experience on B product is far superior to the customer experience on a product, then maybe the little bit of difference that A has over B doesn't matter that much. Yeah, a lot of um, another legacy mindset is uh, that we need to acquire new customers. We need to acquire new clients. And um, and we've seen what happens when things like, you know, the iOS update happens and suddenly everything falls apart. And it's because the cost of acquisition is so high because this choice is so readily yeah. available to people that you have got to focus on relationships. And if you're in a B2B situation like I am, that means integrating yourself in with mm -hmm. the clients that you're serving so that you are one of them. And that, that's right. more than customer experience. That's like you are mm -hmm. just as invested in the business as they are. Um, and if that means that you're you're in-house, then that means you're, you're, you're integrating yourself into different levels of the organization that you wouldn't be. Um, because uh, if you're deploying consumer programs, retention, um, customer experience; these are going to be the new bottom lines that 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 will that will focus. You have to keep the money coming in that's already there, rather than spend the money to get uh, something that's not. Yeah, no, no, I'm absolutely, and I, I totally agree. And I think one of the things that uh, is going to you know challenge um, marketing and communications professionals a lot is exactly what you were just were talking about. There is because you have to have a greater level, I think, of intellectual curiosity than ever before. Curiosity about business, about the industry, because I do feel that sometimes marketing communications people have sort of said, well, we're the, you know, we have our skill set, we're over here and it can be applied to anything. Therefore, we don't really need to deep dive and understand, you know, business on that level. And I just think that's, I'm not sure that was ever true, but it's certainly not true now. I'm so glad you said that. I mean, one of the, uh, one of the things I see a lot in our space is that we are, we are the experts. We are the mm -hmm. experts. And I, I don't doubt that we all have our expertise, but I, I think that it's a dangerous territory to call yourself an expert when none of us know what the hell is going on. I mean, <laughs> the world is changing way too much. There's no way you can be an expert in our field because what happened today is completely different than what's going on yesterday. Uh, but but uh, like you say, understanding understanding the business, that that's what's most important because if you understand the business, you're more resilient and you can you can swap out tactics as you need to. Yeah. And that's why I really do feel like marketing communications professionals have to start asking a lot more questions. And I said, being intellectually curious, but asking more questions across the business to understand it, asking, asking to understand, maybe communicate better with, you know, existing customers to understand things. But that whole, I think that whole education piece, and you're right, is if you got to go around and say, well, listen, I have my marketing degree and I've been a marketer for 10 years, therefore I am an, ex I am an expert. I don't need to do any of these things. Well, you know, good luck with that yeah i'm a little worried but you know, i'm starting to get gray hair uh <laughs> i'm a little worried i'm a little worried when i see gray hairs come out and say well this is obviously the way we need to do it because they're implying that this is always always the way things were done 
And um, I, I try to be conscious of that myself because I, you know, I've been doing this a long time. So I, I draw on experiences a lot, but some of those experiences I shouldn't be drawing on. Things have changed. Right. And, and yeah, be intellectually curious about these changes. I mean, we should, as a 45 year old, I'm on TikTok. I need to know what's going on out there, you know, and, and, and we all need to be curious about what's going on with Gen Z. Gen Z is already establishing businesses. How are they running their businesses? I guarantee you it's very different than how boomers were. And we need to understand how that's working because that's our future. Yeah. Well, and I spoke to somebody a while back, interviewed them, and they said that this is the first time in history where we have some, we have four, if not five generations in the workplace, right? I mean, yes. we have the, the most diverse generational um, workplace ever. So to your point, this uh, it's, it's diverse in the workplace. Your customer base is just as diverse of that and getting more diverse. So yeah, how you, how you communicate to somebody of of my generation as opposed to how you would communicate to you know 20 somethings who are who are now as you said doing their own businesses or coming through it's very different and then everybody in between right uh, but at the same time we all behave as humans and we might look at things differently but where where the commonalities are is that we we want to uh, work and be and consume with people that are on the up and up that are authentic mm -hmm. and that share our values. And so the best way to reach across generations is to clearly communicate your values. And the moment you do that, you already stand aside from your competitors who are not doing that. So they're using a different mm -hmm. mindset. There's an example I like to pull on a lot and maybe I need to come up with a new one, but I'm a big coffee drinker. And when you look at like the coffee marketplace, I, I subscribe to La Colombe, um, which is like premium coffee that costs way too much money that probably at the end of the day tastes the same as Folgers, which I can just not subscribe to and go and buy at the grocery store, right? But why do I do that? I don't do it because of taste. I certainly don't do it because of price. I do it because I share the values of La Colombe. I know that where the beans are sourced. I know that I'm helping small businesses when I order it. I know that it's ethical. I don't know anything about Folgers. When I go to their branding, I see Folgers is relying on their brand name and their legacy. Well, that doesn't do anything these days so you know yeah no i think that's a super point because i mean you know taking just the folgers i mean how long has folger how long has folgers been around so they're probably as you said probably still drawing on the same mission statement from whatever 100 years ago <laughs> right but 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 it, it is it is a, it is a very good point and i think that i i think that's one that's not always understood by a lot of people about this idea of aligning yourself with a brand that reflects who you are i think i think yeah some people can maybe maybe they see that in consumer product but they don't realize how much it extends you know that it permeates the whole b2b space as well and that this is becoming more of a criteria for people yeah absolutely and i think that's that's what the new economy looks like it, it's people sharing in values that's why you, you look at more than profit uh, are, are your people thriving i mean a lot of the discussions you're hearing organizational management about, you know, Gen Z and how they're reacting to the way the older models work. I mean, that's not coming out of nowhere. It's because uh, there are choices and they can they can work at places that share their values. Uh, and, and when they do, suddenly they're they're advocates. And, you know, we're not used to in a workplace having people that are advocates for the company. And, and so it, it, it transcends everything. It's not only your customers, it's it's your clients, it's your partners, it's your vendors. It's your employees. And I think just the final point, yeah, and I agree on that. I think the final point is then is this we have to get away from the traditional um, not even business models, but the organizational models. Right. Um, because to your point, uh, you can have people like extremely loyal to your business if maybe they don't need to be in your office. They don't need to be located in a high cost area. They can live wherever they want and they can have the, you know, the lifestyle that they want. And then they're a happy, productive employee, um, as opposed to, you know, the old model of saying, no, you gotta be, you gotta move to this high cost area and get a mortgage you can't afford. You gotta be commuting an hour into the office every day. Oh, and by the way, if there's a downturn, we're probably going to fire you and going to be stuck with that, uh, stuck with that big mortgage in the high cost area. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I, I think people are done with it. You know, they, the, the, the pandemic has sort of broken down a lot of walls for people. I mean, I don't know how long that model would have lasted in the old world, but this is a new world. And uh, there's a reason that work from home is becoming um, 
a, such a challenge for organizations so they're, they don't they're not used to thinking that way about mm -hmm. giving people freedom about not micromanaging them, about letting them have a life uh that that isn't completely subscribed to the organization and i know we're talking about marketing and comms but this is yeah. like this is yeah. this is part of all of the same discussion i mean you if you're not um an, an authentic believer in in your work uh people can tell and if your employees are not an authentic believer in the company customers can tell clients can tell yeah though no, i i totally agree and that's a that's a great place to end on because i do think that if when you interact with somebody from a business or, you know who represents a business or a service if they're not enthusiastic and if you can't as you said see the genuine attachment they have and belief they have in their product or or or, or service you know, then why would i why would i get excited about something that you're not excited about i mean I'm, that's kind of you know kind of counterintuitive isn't it <laughs> right right that's um, yeah. that's exactly it. the um, the the choices are infinite for our customers, our clients, our vendors, and everybody, our employees. So be the choice that they want. Yeah, because I, I just use, just in, in, in closing, I just used this example from quite recently, probably about or last November or something, I needed to get the air conditioning units replaced, right? And that's not very exciting, isn't it? Air conditioning units aren't very exciting. Uh, and I uh, went to a couple of different uh, uh, providers. But one, this guy came out and he loved air conditioning. Everything about Sesc, I loved everything. He was so he was so enthusiastic about it, so excited about it, so eager to share his information that I started getting interested and excited about it. And I'm going cool. And obviously he got the business. So I, I love when sometimes when people say like, oh well, I mean, not in transactional. I think in anything, in anything that you're representing, if if you believe in it, you're enthusiastic about it. That's infectious. Absolutely. I, I love that story. I, I've met some people like that too, that, that are just so into the trade and we need to be into our trade too. You know, that goes yeah. down to picking your customers. Yes. Pick them, pick the ones you want to yeah. work with that you're excited to. And, um, and that, that authenticity then comes out, then it's not a buzzword Then it. It's really yeah. who you are. Absolutely. Yeah. So I would say is, you know, be yourself. What's it Oscar Wilde said? Be yourself because everyone else is taken. Right. <laughs> exactly. Well, uh, well, listen, Mark, this has been great. All of Mark's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about what you do. Uh, I, uh, I, what don't I do? I, I am a communications marketing professional. I work uh, primarily with uh, brands and business leaders on getting more visibility in the marketplace. Um, and I work on all kinds of other things. But everything you need to know about me, you can find at havener.com, H-A-V-E-N-N-E-R.com. Perfect. Well, listen, thanks again, Mark. Thank you for watching and listening. And I will see you all again very soon. Thank you. Thanks.